Bitcoin is on the rise again. Right now, Bitcoin is uh, is king. Uh, Bitcoin has um, done some amazing things this week. And I'm going to break some of this down for you. Uh, so get comfortable. Buckle up your seatbelt. We're going to get started on the Black Financial Channel right now. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Black Financial Channel. This is the BlackFinancialChannel.com. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. I am your friendly neighborhood finance professor. On the Black Financial Channel, we talk about black wealth and black economics every day, sometimes as much as 10 times a day under one condition. The condition is that to be on this platform, we ask that you be black first. Black first means that we put the black community at the top of our priority list. Black first means that black wealth matters to us more than anybody else's wealth. Uh, Black first also means that we will put our children ahead of the curve economically and educationally uh, in the next 50 years. Project 2070 is what it's called. B1, hashtag B1 is what we use as our hashtag. So use the hashtag B1 uh, as you engage in productive, powerful black conversations. So uh, hello, I want to say hello to Courtney and Natalie and Tiki and Joshua and Andre. Uh, How many of you own Bitcoin? Give me a yes or no in the chat if you are an owner of Bitcoin, if you are a proud uh, purchaser of this amazing cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin. uh, Give me a yes in the chat if you own some Bitcoin, uh, because I want to congratulate you personally, because Bitcoin is just killing the game right now. Bitcoin is is just literally right now uh, the most um, amazing crypto uh, on earth in terms of uh, what's going on with the price points. Uh, and a lot, and I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about what's going on with Bitcoin and why Bitcoin is is making its move um, the way it's been making it. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware; they just sort of think the price movements kind of just occur out of the blue. Well, they don't. They don't. They, they, these price movements occur typically due to some sort of information that is favorable to the asset. Uh, the thing about Bitcoin is Bitcoin is a little bit like. Uh, you know, what happens to, when you die and, do, you know, do you go to heaven? Uh, do you uh, do you go to hell? Do you, uh, you know, float around and hang out in your old neighborhood and haunt people for, for all of uh, all of eternity? What do you do? What happens when you die? Well, nobody really knows. Right. Nobody really knows for sure. I mean, everybody swears that they know, but I don't believe none of y'all know because ain't none of y'all been dead before. Uh, and but but people have theories. Right. And the theories, uh, some theories have more weight than others. Uh, if a powerful mega pastor says, well, I heard that when you die, you're going to have, you know, a big plate of Popeye's chicken waiting for you uh, when you get to heaven. And they're going to give you they're going to have a bunch of pretty girls from uh, from you know, Magic City uh, massaging your feet. Well, you know, if the if the pastor is um, influential, then people might believe that. So they might start believing that, you know, everybody that dies, gets a big plate of Popeye's chicken and and their feet get rubbed by the ladies from Magic City. Uh, but, you know, the, the thing is, is that does that make it more true just because somebody said it? No, not really. No, not really. I mean, really, to some extent, that is a religious rumor. Like I heard I heard this is what God going to do when you die. But nobody really knows. And so Bitcoin's kind of the same way. You know, you've got a lot of people out here that will talk all day long about what they believe the fundamental value of Bitcoin is going to be. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki, for example, who I respect, you know, rich dad, poor dad guy. Uh, you know, he loves Bitcoin. Uh, And he mentioned some specific reasons why, which I I think actually makes sense. Right. I'm not even sitting here to tell you that I think Kiyosaki is full of crap. Uh, But I will just say that there are many, 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 many different perspectives on what Bitcoin is going to do in the future. uh, Why Bitcoin is doing what it's doing right now. Why it hit the 61,000 mark, et cetera. So nobody really knows for sure. But here's Kiyosaki's quote, by the way, in case you want to want to see it. He says here, I, I'll read it to you in case you can't read it. He says, hooray, Bitcoin rising above 60,000. Future very bright. Celebrate yet be cautious. I am waiting for a pullback before investing more. So Kiyosaki might actually be right about this. I agree with him where he's making the argument that Bitcoin uh, is, is doing great right now and it looks beautiful, but it's probably going to have a pullback. And that makes sense uh, from a more dynamic uh, sort of psychological trading kind of process, right, a perspective, meaning like, OK, yeah, Bitcoin just had this big move. Uh, typically, after a big move, you have what you would refer to as a reversal. Um, and these reversals are real. I wrote my whole dissertation about stock market reversals back when I was at Ohio State uh, a zillion years ago. And uh, and that's true. That tends to be true with crypto. Uh, now, here's what's interesting about Bitcoin, though, a couple of dynamics that I'll point out to you that that really fascinate me about the cryptocurrency. Uh, one is that Bitcoin just seems to be that kind of thing where 
um, it wouldn't surprise me if Bitcoin just really takes off. I think that it's the amount of adoption of Bitcoin that becomes the driver uh, because it's a pure supply demand play. Uh, you know, I've noticed that uh, there are little indicators I've seen, for example, stating that most people who buy Bitcoin don't actually want to sell it. Right. There are there are so many people, a large percentage of Bitcoin owners are like, I ain't selling you nothing. I'm holding on to this stuff forever. And that means that's because they believe Bitcoin's going to go high, like Royal 87. I agree with you. He says uh, 100K in 2022. I think that's a distinct possibility. In fact, my prediction for Bitcoin earlier this year was that by January 1st, 2022, I predicted Bitcoin would hit $108,000. I still think that was a good prediction, even though I don't think it's going to happen. The reason I think it's a good prediction is because it was on that pace until you started seeing people sort of throwing dirt on Bitcoin's name. You started creating, what was it called? Um, what they call it? A FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You know, you had Janet Yellen saying stupid things about Bitcoin. You had uh, people around the world, China, kind of doing some weird regulatory things to shut down Bitcoin. I mean, they pretty much made it illegal to do any transactions in Bitcoin. And that kills the demand. Uh, so with Bitcoin being a supply demand play, and knowing that most people who own Bitcoin hoard it and knowing that more people are going to demand it, then if you know in basic economics with supply demand curves, you know that as the demand goes up and the supply remains constant, the price of the commodity is going to do what? What's it going to have? What's going to happen to somebody? This is a Dr. Boy's quiz. Uh, what happens to a commodity when the demand goes up and the supply remains constant or supply goes down? Somebody, somebody tell me what happens to the price. Put it in the chat. There you go. It goes up, 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 right? So I believe that little things like this are pretty much going to be the driving factors behind Bitcoin and why it's probably one of the safest predictions out there. Uh, now, do me a favor, guys. Uh, I'm going to mention to you what, what I'm doing with my crypto uh, in one second. Do me a favor before that. Uh, could you hit the thumbs up button? Please take one second. We are building Black-owned media. You guys know this. Uh, and if you could, please hit the thumbs up button, share, subscribe button. And speaking of crypto in the Black Business School, we actually have a Black Crypto Club, which is led by uh, Teddy Ewing. Teddy Ewing is the facilitator of the Black Crypto Club. And uh, she lives in Egypt. She's a very smart sister. And uh, we're actually going to do crypto at the All Black National Convention this year. Uh, the All Black National Convention is going to be in Orlando. October 29th through November 1st. And if you'd like to join us, uh, we're, we're, crypto is going to be one of the things of many things we're going to do. You can go to allblacknationalconvention.com. Bring your family, bring your church group, bring your investment club, whatever the case may be. And also college students, if you show a valid student ID at the door, we'll let you in free because we want our young people to learn what they need to learn. And you're going to learn a whole lot more from the 59 black speakers and experts I brought together than you'll ever learn on that raggedy college campus. They, they can show you everything you need to know about being white, but ain't too many places where you can go where you can find 59 black experts and speakers who can show you how to be black. So that's the number one training that we need in our community is how to be black. We got enough black people who know how to be white. Harvard can teach you how to be white. We can teach you how to be black. So feel free to join us at the All Black National Convention. Now let's move on. Uh, so so with um, with Bitcoin, you're, you're seeing this, this really awesome move right now. Uh, it, it broke 61,000. Congratulations to those who've been patient. A couple of factors I've observed that I think are going to are moving the price of Bitcoin right now. Uh, one is uh, the uh, this is, I'm going to read it right out of CNBC. Apparently, there's a, a Bitcoin futures ETF um, on the horizon that's going to start trading next week. According to CNBC, the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, which will give exposure to Bitcoin futures contracts but not the spot market, will trade under the ticker BITO. The Securities and Exchange Commission had not formally approved the creation of Bitcoin futures ETF as of Friday afternoon, and the agency may never make a formal declaration of approval for it. The proposal date for the listing is Monday, according to the new filing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's when it will begin trading. That could come later in the week. Okay, so uh, as you typically expect, there's more regulatory uncertainty about what's going to happen with crypto. It's kind of a frustrating thing. It's, it's really one of those things where uh, you kind of wish... Uh, the regulators would just sort of give people more certainty about where this thing is going, 
What what are you going to do with crypto? Do you love it or do you hate it? Uh, the same thing is happening with cannabis, which is kind of making it a tough area to invest. Uh, also, the greatest regulatory uncertainty right now in the investing world is actually in China, where the Chinese government is just acting crazy. Like they're, they're literally acting like your crazy crackhead cousin where, that you, where you don't know what the hell they're going to do next. So it's kind of um, uh, it's kind of an interesting, uncertain environment for the most part. Now, um, let me see here. Now, the next uh, thing that that's happening that I thought was really interesting that relates to uh, what's going on right now with crypto is that the Square CEO, Jack Dorsey, who I believe his voice, his name, his words is right up there with the Elon Musk's, not quite an Elon Musk. Maybe he's like a one third of an Elon Musk. Uh, he is the guy that, you know, when he talks, um, people listen. So Jack Dorsey, the the, the CEO of Twitter and Square, uh, you know, this weird hippie looking bearded white guy who looks kind of like a Brad Pitt's, you know, funny looking little brother. I'm gonna put his picture up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, he basically says that Square is going to start digging into the crypto space. Um, it almost seems to me like he wants to take Square and Coinbase. I'm sorry, not Coinbase. I'm sorry, Square and Twitter and make them into platforms where you can actually do uh, crypto mining. Uh, and I'm going to read here according to uh, there's this picture, by the way, that you see the whole weird, like, like, uh, like I'm Brad Pitt's ugly little brother. Like, that's kind of like the way I would describe him. Right. But he's, you know, but he's influential. Right. People listen to him. Uh, he's <clears throat> he's a smart guy. Um, he runs a Twitter. Uh, if Twitter gets involved in the crypto space, uh, I believe that's going to be huge uh, for crypto investors. I believe that's going to be huge for your uh, your asset base. So it says here that Square CEO Jack Dorsey said late on Friday that the company might jump into the Bitcoin mining business. Dorsey tweeted that the company is considering, quote, a Bitcoin mining system based on custom silicon and open source for individuals and businesses worldwide. If Square does execute on this, Dorsey said the company would follow its hardware wallet model, quote, build in the open in collaboration with the community. Uh, so effectively, uh, his tweet uh, pushed the price of Bitcoin above 62000 He did a string of tweets. Uh, his goal would be to make crypto mining the process of creating new Bitcoins by solving increasingly comp computational problems more accessible, much as Square's original vision was to make it easier for small businesses and independent proprietors to take credit card payments. He wrote that Bitcoin mining should be, quote, as easy as plugging a rig into a power source. Today, the Bitcoin mining industry is dominated by large-scale players who can afford to buy tens of thousands of ASICs, the type of special specialty gear used to mint new coin. The team run by Jesse Doro, Doro Gusker, I can't pronounce that name, who is the head hardware lead at Square, will begin studying the technology necessary to take this project on. Uh, quote, we will incubate the Bitcoin mining system project inside Square's hardware team, starting with the architecture design and prototyping of more efficient silicon, hashing algorithms, and power architectures. So that's a, that's a big deal. That's a big deal because what that says is that uh, Twitter and Square are going to dive into this crypto stuff. Um, I think that's only going to serve to uh, increase demand uh, for Bitcoin. The, the big cryptos, primarily um, Ethereum and Bitcoin. If you want to know what I'm doing with my crypto right now, here's what I'm doing. I'm not telling you to do what I do, but here's what uh, here's what I am doing right now. I'm consolidating, man. I'm consolidating. You know, I, I had a lot of obscure cryptos that I owned. I owned some Gollum. I own some basic attention token. Um, I own some NEO. Well, when I saw this move kind of happening, I was already leaning in this direction. I said, you know what? Let me hop in to Bittrex and just I'm selling my Gollum, selling my BAT, selling my NEO, and I'm converting that into Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now, I'm not saying this is the best strategy. I'm not saying this is the way the, the, the way of the world or what's going to definitely win. But what I'm really seeing is a, a, a play here where Ethereum is too big to fail. Ethereum is just kicking ass and taking names. They're developing NFTs on the Ethereum network. They're, the, Ethereum is a world creator uh, where it's they're literally building platforms on top of the platform, which makes me believe Ethereum is going to continue to go up. 
Also, Bitcoin is just that's the boss. You know, this is the Spike Lee of cryptocurrencies, right? Spike Lee doesn't make the best black movies, but Spike Lee is the originator of black filmmakers in this generation. So you can't ignore Spike Lee, right? right? So to some extent, um, I think that all this is good news for Bitcoin. I think the price increase is going to continue to um, move forward. I also think that this volatility that you're going to see in Bitcoin, you're going to see the price go down most likely. You're probably going to see some sort of a dip. I know that um, uh, was it, uh, uh, Kiyosaki just mentioned that he expects there to be a dip. I don't doubt what he's saying. I, I just think at the end of the day, though, um, you, I don't live for dips, right? Because sometimes you can sit around waiting for the dip all day and uh, and the dip may never arrive. And next thing you know, when you finally do buy in, you're going to have to buy in at a higher price point. So I'd be real careful about just waiting for dips. Um, instead, what I do is every week I buy a little bit of crypto just on autopilot. So if the price goes up, I buy a higher price. If the price goes down, I buy at a lower price because I know that on average, over time, the price is going to go up. They call that dollar cost averaging. And uh, and so with crypto, uh, don't forget the All Black National Convention, which is happening October 29th and November 1st. We are going to talk crypto big time. One guy that's going to be there is this guy, Jay Ortiz. Jay Ortiz is um, a smart young brother and a rapper. He's the CEO and founder of Art from the Heart out of Philadelphia. Philadelphia. And one of the things that Jay is doing that, that if you're young, if you're in your 20s you or 30s, you want to check out Jay because Jay is he created one of the first ever NFT art galleries out in Philadelphia. I went to his uh, one of his uh, art gallery openings in Philadelphia and uh, it was really fascinating. There's literally nothing. There was no art in the room. Everything was you, you would see it through the cell phone. Well, there, there was a little bit, but there wasn't much. And it was really fascinating to understand the world of NFTs. I think NFTs are going to be massive and huge. That's why you got people like Jay-Z and other people spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on various um, NFTs, uh, which stands for non-fungible tokens. Uh, I believe the world is going to get tokenized. I really think that that's like the wave of the future. Another sister that's going to be at the All Black National Convention is a sister named Carla Ballard. Carla Ballard, look her up. Google this black woman after we get done because Carla Ballard is an absolute badass. Carla Ballard is one of, if not the leading black crypto thinkers in the in the world. Uh, she's coming to the convention. Uh, we're going to have a meeting of the Black Crypto Club. So we got a lot of stuff going on with crypto because we believe crypto is one of the game changers for the future. So we're going to talk about crypto at the All Black National Convention. If you want to join us, go to allblacknationalconvention.com. If you want to join, if you can't make it to the convention and you want to digitally connect uh, with some of our crypto people in the Black Business School, you can actually go to the theblackcryptoclub.com. I believe that the Black Crypto Club meets this week. All right. So, um, so with XRP, uh, I see some of you are mentioning XRP. Um, I like XRP uh, long term, uh, short term XRP. I can't sell it right now um, on my Coinbase app. There are ways to sell it and ways to buy more. I'm not buying more and I'm not going to sell it. I'm just sitting on it like a like a goose sitting on a golden egg, because I believe that once crypto, uh, once XRP, once they let it out of jail, you know, they got it locked up like Tupac. So once uh, XRP gets let out of jail, I think XRP is going to go to the moon. So I'm a big fan of XRP uh, right now. And uh, and I see your question. Gopher Lee says, Dr. Boyce, do you own stocks listed on foreign exchanges? Um, a little bit, but mostly when I want to uh, diversify internationally, I just go through um, some sort of a mutual fund or something that invests internationally. I don't feel like I have to necessarily own those stocks directly. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, uh, anyway, do me a favor, if you could, please hit the thumbs up, share, subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys um, at the All Black National Convention. Uh, you guys know that this year we're actually incorporating speed dating, which is uh, we have a lot of relationship experts. And one of the things they brought to my attention is that when you are black and intelligent, uh, it, it's hard to date in a world full of idiots. Uh, when you're black and conscious, it's hard to date in a world full of people that are asleep. Uh, when you're black and you're B1 and you're, you're woke and you're trying to make progress and trying to build a solid family, uh, it's hard to to date in a world where people are influenced in a crazy negative way and they're not interested in family and they're not interested in getting along. They're only interested in chaos and drama. So uh, my wife, who happens to be a relationship therapist, she's licensed. She's a full professor of social work. She'll be there, Dr. Alicia. Uh, she and the team, uh, Dr. Adrian Carter, who's a real smart brother also, who's also licensed, uh, they decided to do speed dating at this year's convention. So uh, if you come to allblacknationalconvention.com, as soon as you get there, you if you are single, you can register for speed dating. We also have speed networking for people that are not interested in hooking up with anybody. But if you're looking to date somebody, looking to marry, 
relationships are the most important part of your of of your wealth journey. Uh, un, unhealthy relationships are wealth destroyers, and we're full. Of, we have a community full of unhealthy relationships. You know, all kinds of broken families. We think that that's normal. That ain't normal, y'all. That is not normal. So we're here to remedy that. Uh, that's why we're bringing in fifty nine speakers and experts from a wide variety of areas because we're creating the Black Brain Trust that is specifically designed to solve problems. So one of the problems we're going to solve is we're going to help you find somebody that matches you, somebody that matches your thinking. So if that's your thing, if you're interested in that, uh, that's another just one of probably 80 benefits that we have uh, for the All Black National Convention. So I hope you'll join us. It's in Orlando, October 29th through November 1st. Just go to allblacknationalconvention.com. The URL is on the screen. All right. Thank you for hearing me out on this. Uh, I hope you all will participate in some way. This is a big deal. We've never done it this big before. It's bigger and blacker and more intelligent than it's ever been. And uh, and I look forward to seeing you all at the convention. So anyway, guys, take care. God bless you. Uh, please have a great day. Please hit the thumbs up button on your way out. And uh, I will see you all soon. Talk to you later. Peace.